Good morning. Good morning, one and all, to you here in this sanctuary. Good morning, or afternoon, or evening, or middle of the night, to those of you who are watching us recorded, or good morning to those of you who are watching live. We say here in this church and in congregations around the United Church of Christ that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, no matter from where or how you are participating in this worship service, you are welcome here. Uh, just again, a reminder, we now um, have our announcements uh, running before the service and at the end of the service. But just in case you did not uh, catch the details, I wanted to say a few words about the flowers. We have an abundance of flowers this morning. Uh, one arrangement is given by Kay Sanders and family in loving memory of her son, Cliff. Other uh, arrangements by Ron and Jody Harrell in memory of Margaret and Graham, and also a, an arrangement by Ed and Andrea Schneider in memory of Arlen Arndt. <coughs> Excuse me. And the rose on the communion table is in celebration of the baptism of Myla Ames Zock, which will take place uh, a little later today. So now I invite us all to take a deep breath, to breathe in the grace and the blessing that God has prepared for us in this time together. And is, as is our custom here at First Congregational, we will begin our worship service with the sound of the singing bowl. I invite you to let it help you settle into this time of worship. a little uncooperative, brand new wick. With prayers for peace in our hearts and peace and healing in our world, we light this candle. Oh, I can blow it. I don't have a mask on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, young gentlemen. It's a good reminder that masks work, that we cannot blow something out with them. And now I invite you to rise, uh, if it's comfortable for you to do so, and stay where you are. And note that those who are watching us online are seeing us through that camera. Make sure as we share the peace with one another, we share the peace of God with those who are spread out elsewhere. May the peace of God be with you all. And now will you join me? in the responsive call to worship. Let us give thanks to the Holy One with our whole hearts. Let us join our voices in praise and wonder. Let us dare to trust that the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit will be with us forever. Let us pray. God of grace and mercy, Holy One of eternal love. As the days get shorter, we remember that you are our God in all the seasons of our lives. We give thanks that you gather us in the ways that we can, across time, across miles, and also in this very place. Wherever we are, 
we ask for what you are already giving, the presence of your spirit and the strength of your love, that we might live this day as your people, followers of Jesus, beloved of God. Amen. Please be seated. Now we will have our first song this morning, Pack Up Your Sorrows, brought to us by Mike Ford. No use crying, talking to a stranger, naming the sorrows you seen. Too many sad times, too many bad times, and no one knows what you mean. But if somehow you could pack up your sorrows and give them all to me. Thanks and blessings to Mike, and a good reminder that the Spirit of God is in our kitchens as well as in the sanctuary. So I would invite you all to imagine that you're here with me, gathered around for uh, what we call children's time, a chance to talk about some of the love and grace of God in a little different way than the more formal sermon. So. This morning, we hear um, one of my favorite passages from the Gospels. It's um, Jesus calling some fishermen. They were all men. Inviting them to follow him. Now, we'll hear more about the story. We'll hear, hear the story, and then we'll hear more about it in a few moments. But one of the things I love about this story is it, it ends with, you know, I will make you fishers of people. I'll make you fish for people. Okay, but what does that mean? You know, my, my, my silly brain that loves to eat goes immediately to, okay, so I fish for people, and instead of fish, I eat the people for dinner? It's like, no, I don't think so. What does it mean to fish for people? Well, in this story, um, those men who soon are to become disciples have been fishing all night 
and have not caught anything. And they fish by throwing out big nets. So I think Jesus is inviting us to think about casting our, our love and our, our friendliness, our compassion, really, really broadly and see what happens. And so I just kind of, I looked, we, we looked in the um, um, church building to see if we had some fishing nets, but we don't have a great use for them, so we don't. But what we have at home is a great big sheet. So I want to imagine, ask you to imagine that this is a fishing net. And Jesus says, let's go fish for some people. And we say, all right, doesn't make any sense, but hey, we'll do it anyway. And so we cast our net wide, and guess what? There are all these people, marvelous people, lovely people, people of grace, people with heartache and joy, people, people, people. So I think Jesus is inviting us to cast our nets and wait and see what amazing abundance comes and realize that in casting those nets, we're called to make community. We're called to remember that we are bound together, all of us, not just here in this church, but around the world in God's love and grace. And so that we can be wildly extravagant with our kindness. Imagine having huge nets to fish for people. And those nets are made of grace and possibility and healing and love. Which are some of the things I find in this community here. So watch as you live this week. See if there's someone, maybe it's somebody who's really angry, or maybe it's someone that you just can't see the light in that person's eyes. And not physically, I don't mean like grab a sheet and throw it over them, but imagine casting a net of love and healing and wait and see what happens. And maybe nothing will happen that day, but we don't know. What will happen the day after and the day after? So let's catch. Let's fish for some people and see what happens. Would you pray with me? Loving God, Jesus still walks among us and invites us to reach out to cast our nets wide, our nets of love and compassion, forgiveness and possibility. In and through you, we can become fishers of people. We can become bearers of your light and love in the world. Thanks be to you for all these things and more. Amen. Now let's hear a couple of readings, one from the book of Joshua and one from the Gospel of Luke. This morning's first reading immediately follows the end of the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses. As the books of Exodus and Deuteronomy tell the story of the ancient Israelites, Moses was able to lead the people up to, but not across the River Jordan. The task of leading the people now falls on Joshua. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, My servant Moses is dead. Now proceed to cross the Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the Israelites. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, to the great sea, and the west shall be your territory. No one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. 
As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall put this people in possession of the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to act in accordance with the, all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it on day and night, so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall be successful. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be the frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. This morning's reading comes from Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Genesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one that belonged to Simon, and asked him to pull out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Pull out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But then Simon Peter saw it. He fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of the fish that they had taken. And so were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be fishers of people. And they had brought their boats to shore. They left everything and followed him. Can you imagine? You've been out all night. You're a fisherman or a fisherwoman, fisher person. You fish for a living. You fish to feed your family. You fish to be able to perhaps sell it at market or trade it for other items you and your family need. It's been a long, long night. And you've caught nothing. And you're thinking about going home. And maybe you're going home and the people at home are hungry. And they're looking forward to you bringing fish. And you're thinking about what it's going to be like to tell them that you caught nothing. You're tired. You're discouraged. You're worried. And then this man, whom you've had seen a little bit in action, comes along. He's been there. He's there. And he tells you, to go back, to do it again after you've tried all night. But Simon recognizes God in Jesus. And I don't know, maybe he's a little skeptical. Maybe he's really hopeful. Maybe he's just dazed. But he puts out into the deep and catches an abundance of fish. I think about us. I think how easy it can be to imagine being Simon and James and John that morning after trying so hard all night to do what they needed to do to care for their families and themselves, 
to no avail. And God comes to them in Jesus and says, you ain't done. Go back. I think perhaps we can get a glimpse of that. Many of us, most of us, all of us have tried for months to do what is ours to do, to help not only ourselves, but our families and our communities to get through this pandemic safely. And here we are, wearing masks again, still spread out, not yet singing inside. And God comes to us in Jesus and says, keep doing it. Try some more. Don't give up. Trust me. Love and care for the neighbor is still the way. Follow me, says Jesus, in the way. And the book of Joshua, seemingly not connected at all to the story from Luke, gives us the people of Israel, the ancient Israelites, and their new leader, Joshua. They're at the River Jordan. Things have not gone particularly well for the people of Israel the last 40 years either. They have struggled with God. They have grumbled. They have been angry at Moses. And for reasons that biblical scholars love to continue to debate, Moses doesn't get to lead the people across the river into the promised land. That falls on Joshua. And Joshua, in some ways, like those fishermen that early morning, has all sorts of reasons to feel discouraged, apprehensive, weighed down. But the Holy One says to him, it's your turn. Lead these people across the river. And I command you to be strong and courageous. Now, I'll be honest, the book of Joshua is not easy reading. It takes us into the difficulties of what we do with the violence in the Bible. And I don't, not, it won't be for this morning to get into that. I just want to acknowledge that. But here in this moment, on the edge of the River Jordan, God says to Joshua, be strong and courageous. And the way that plays out in the book of Joshua is troublesome. But I hear that command to all of us, be strong and courageous as Jesus is strong and courageous. So whether it is continuing to live in a pandemic or whether it is still you know, being the church at the edge of what we've known in the past about what it means to be church and needing to move into new territory just like those Israelites had to. However we are moving, we are called into new territory, being strong and courageous as Jesus was strong and courageous. Speaking the truth, speaking the truth to power, bringing healing, <laughs> challenging the religious authorities, noticing the people that were on the margins, preaching good news to the poor, declaring liberation for the captive, all knowing 
the way he was living, strong and courageously, was pointing to trouble for him. It was leading to Jerusalem and his betrayal and his execution by the authorities. But he trusted in the one who had created him. And he trusted in the power of God's love no matter what. So that strength that God calls us to is a strength of faith and love. That courage God calls us to is a courage to share ourselves and risk ourselves. Self-giving love. And remember, it's not just in a pandemic. When we will have our own fishless nights, it can be in our relationships with our families. It can be in our own struggles with addiction and alcoholism. It can be in our own need for healing body, mind, and spirit. We will go through those long nights feeling like our nets are empty. And God will come to us and ask us to try again. As Jesus said to Simon, put out into the deep. And our, the invitation to us is to listen, to risk the deep waters, and to be willing to be led. It can sound so simple, and it can be so daunting. But let's try it anyway. In and through the grace of God, all things are possible. Amen and amen. As we move into our time of prayer, I would like to uh, remind those of you who were at our outdoor service last week and, and to share with those of you who are not, there is out in the foyer a basket of stones, glass stones, and a bowl of water. I invite you, if you feel so moved, to take from the basket some or one or two or many of those glass stones to represent the losses you and we all have had in this last year and a half and place those stones in the water so that we can remember that even though those who have died are no longer here in the same way, they are held in God's love. And if we look hard enough, we can still see them in our own eyes and in the eyes of those who knew and loved them. Let us share a time of silence with one another. holy mystery. Your beloved Jesus invites us to come to him for his burden is easy and his yoke is light and yet there are times when following him and being faithful to you seems heavy and hard. 
in those times, oh God. Help us remember the steadfastness of your love. Help us remember all those people through whom you have lightened our load. Help us place our trust in you and take the next step and the next. On this beautiful day, O oh God, we give thanks for this, your earth, for all the ways it sustains and nourishes us. Help us hear your call to care for your beloved creation as you care for it and for us all. We offer prayers this morning of celebration as Carolyn Blassingame celebrates her 85th birthday out on the West Coast. We pray too, O oh God, for Jim Kropelian's cousin, Terry, and Terry's family. Terry, who just died of COVID. We offer our prayers of love and healing, too, for Jack Kennedy and his family. Jack is a lifelong dear friend of Kelly Green's dad and has been diagnosed with terminal cancer. Loving God, so many of your people, your children of whatever age, do not have enough to eat or safe water to drink or safe home to rest in. Help us all be about your work of ushering in your vision of shalom, a vision in which all of life flourishes, and we see you in one another and throughout this earth. On this day, we give thanks that Jesus continues to say to us, follow me, as we lift our voices in the prayer he taught so long ago, saying, our creator, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Blessed with one another's company, blessed with the community of so many, blessed by the generosity of those who have gone before us. We too are called to be generous with our time, with our prayers, with our treasure. Let us continue to live as Jesus calls us in generosity and hope as the morning's offering is received.
Would you join me in the prayer of dedication? Eternal God, the world is yours and all that is in it. You call us to be stewards of your creation and of our own talents and treasures. Bless these gifts, we pray, and use them for your vision, justice, peace, and love. Amen. Jesus calls us, you may be seated. Jesus calls us to follow him into territory we do not know. He calls us to move forward in our unknowing. So let us hear now from Carrie Newcomer, making peace with not knowing.
Beloveds, there is so much we do not know. And yet, Jesus calls us to move forward nonetheless. May we walk, may we sit, may we dream, trusting in the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen.